In this video, we're going to look how we can use the Trimble Connect Visualizer to create a real-time render of a SketchUp model. So this is the model that I used in a previous video where I showed off what you can do by combining the Trimble Connect Visualizer and SketchUp. The first thing you'll want to do is install Trimble Connect and then the Visualizer extension. The best way to do that is to open SketchUp, go to File, Trimble Connect, and then go launch Trimble Connect. While this is happening, I should probably note that you can only use the Trimble Connect Visualizer for Windows. This doesn't work for Macs. Okay, so at this point we'll need to sign in. So I'll let you do that. Click Next, and then enter your password, and click Sign In. There is a little bit of a bug with SketchUp and Trimble Connect whereby if you don't have a project existing within Trimble Connect, the connection between SketchUp and Trimble Connect won't work. So if you don't have any projects yet in Trimble Connect, let's first create a project. One thing to note, there's currently three server locations. So choose the appropriate location for yourself, then go new, enter a new project name, choose your location again, and then choose which organization will own this project. Now, because I'm part of multiple organizations, this dropdown is full of a lot of different options. Yours could be a lot simpler than this. There are more options to consider down here, but for now, let's just press submit. Okay, that new project has been created, but what we want to do now is move across to the top right-hand corner here, click on these nine dots, and what we're looking for is Trimble Connect for Windows. So let's go ahead and download that. And we can also start downloading the Trimble Connect Visualizer. So once that's done, it's safer to go ahead and click on this little arrow and show in folder. The reason for that is because we're going to want to right click onto this installer for Trimble Connect and then run as administrator. Just follow along with the normal Windows installation process. Let's go ahead and click install here. Clicking next read through this huge document in about five seconds. And if you're comfortable, accept the terms. The default installation location is fine. And you can select these if you want to, you don't have to. Go ahead and click install. Once that's done, click finish. We're also gonna to wanna to install the visualizer. So let's right click onto that and click install. Once that's done, let's go back to SketchUp, go File, Trimble Connect, Publish As. Now, if your Trimble Connect page doesn't load up, it's because you don't have any existing projects and you'll have that little bug occur where you can't load the integrated Trimble Connect window here. If you remember, this is the project we created and I'll just save the model into here. So Publish Model. That will take a few seconds to upload, and you can just upload any model that you're interested in seeing in Trimble Connect Visualizer. Obviously, larger files will take longer to upload. Once that's done, you'll get the model published successfully. Notification here, just press OK. What we'll want to do now is launch the Trimble Connect desktop app. Let's launch Windows Start and type in Connect. Trimble Connect should be one of the options you have. You should automatically be signed in but if you're not, you'll need to sign in with the same Trimble ID. If you're not in the correct project server location, go ahead and change that up here. And you should be able to find the project we created. Give that a click. From in there, on the left hand side is a list of all the models and files in this project. I'm getting a notification here saying that there's a new version of this file that requires downloading from the server. So I'm going to do that. Just give it a click. So it seems a bit funny, but what we've done here is we've uploaded the SketchUp model to the Trimble Connect cloud, and then we've downloaded it back from the cloud into Trimble Connect desktop. Once that's done, give it a click just to make sure it is selected, and then click View. Depending on the size of the file, that should load quite quickly, really. And over here, once again, is a list of all the files currently loaded into this viewport. If your Trimble Connect Visualizer installation worked, you should see this little button here. All you want to do now is give that button a click. 
Okay, so the Trimble Connect Visualizer is now launched. One thing I'll probably mention at the start is that the navigation is very different to SketchUp. So if you left click and hold, what that does is it orbits around wherever you're pointing when you clicked. If you middle mouse button and hold, this is your pan. If you right click and hold, what you'll be doing is pitching and yawing your camera in position. So it's not moving, it's just pointing up, down, left and right. You'll notice one thing in this model is that none of these trees, for example, have their leaves and the water is still in here too. Now this looks quite different to the video I had before. That's because the Trimble Connect model doesn't bring across the SketchUp tags. So whatever is available or visible at the time of uploading will be what you see in both Trimble Connect and the Visualizer. So let's make a change. Let's close down the Visualizer and then click back in Trimble Connect. Let's go back to SketchUp, change our scene, and you'll notice this is the scene where I have the leaves and no water. What I would suggest is that whatever model you're using, go ahead and make a similar change. You only need to change the various visibility settings. So you may want to go into tags and change some of the available tags, or just change the model in some way. Once you're ready, go File, Trimble Connect, and Publish Model. This is different to Publish As. If you click Publish As, it'll be saving as a new version of that model, whereas this just replaces the existing reference. Once that upload's completed, let's go back to the Trimble Connect desktop app. And by pressing this button, we should be notified that there's a new version of this file ready to be downloaded from the server. So we'll do that again. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and click view again. I have noticed that sometimes, even though we've just downloaded the model on the previous page, you still have to wait for it to load into this page a little while. So do be a little bit patient with it. So once that's loaded, we can have a look around this model and notice that it now represents the changes that we've made in the visibility settings on the model. Once again, let's go ahead and click on the visualizer button here. And it's the same thing here. We can see that the model now represents the changes we've made in the SketchUp model. So there are a few things I'm going to explain about these menu items here. Let's expand this window first of all but then notice there's another button that does something very similar over here. This changes the window into a full screen window. And so sometimes if you have that on, you can forget that it's on and then struggle to move this window to another window if you needed to. So just be aware that that's the full screen button here. And I will expand that out again. From the top, we have the option here to change the sky, which I'll do here. Either gray or a normal sky there. You can change the position of the sun. Notice that impacts the shadows as well. And then the height of the sun there as well. I'll probably move this somewhere like that. Another really cool tool from this page is this button here. So go ahead and click that for me. What that does is it puts a horizon plane into the model for us. And there's two options. The first option just gives you a gray looking plane. The second option gives you a water, animated water plane, which, if there's any water in your model, does help with the realism. You can change the height of this water plane with this slider on the left. So do be careful, place that as close as you can to the right location. I just zoomed in there, obviously. Once that's in place, move your camera around and have a quick look at what you've made. Let's close down this window now. This button will just allow you to take a screenshot. This button will open the folder where the screenshots are saved. This is the materials palette, but because this is coming from SketchUp, everything should already be given proper materials. So there's not really much use for this palette within the Chimble Connect Visualizer for SketchUp users. This button here brings you to a whole heap of other settings. So we have sun brightness. I won't play around with all of these because they are quite self-explanatory. Ambient occlusion though, I will quickly just see if I can find an example of what that looks like. So if I increase the intensity here, notice that makes the corners and edges within the model darker. So you can reset that to where it was before. 
environment light. So if I zoom out again and look at the environment, we can change that up as well and resetting. Skybox brightness. These add more realistic reflections, expect that's camera exposure, all the normal color correction stuff, bloom intensity. So that's bloom from the sun and reflections of the sun and depth of field. Depth of field is actually something that's quite fun. I'm going to move inside the model here and rotate my camera a little bit and turn on depth of field. And what you'll see is that as I move, if I turn depth of field on and as I move this depth of field slider closer or further away, what is in focus changes. Now, if I want to extend the range of that depth of field, I can increase that slider here and push that out a little bit. And so you can experiment with these to get some quite cool camera effects. So if I'll move my camera around, and then slowly move through, you can see that things that are really close to the camera appear blurred out, whereas things at that particular range are less blurred and they're more blurred again. I can increase that effect by doing this. So there's some pretty cool settings to play around with. And if you want to reset all of them, you can just do that from here and then close it down. If you have access to and use VR equipment, you can check out this button here. I haven't played around with that yet, so I can't really comment. This button is a zoom extents button. This button here is to create different scenes. And so this is where you actually make your animations. So let's say I will create my first scene here, move my camera across to the to here, and maybe point down, and then create a new scene and then another one down here and a new scene. And if I press play here, you can see that animation run through. One thing I have noticed, and it should be quite apparent as I went through that animation, when these trees were made, they were made using transparent materials. And there seems to be some issue with transparent materials in front of the animated water. I'll show you what I mean. If I now turn the animated water off, you can see that the trees render correctly. And if I just use a normal gray plane here, once again, they render correctly. But as soon as I put that animated water back on, we have that issue again. So do be aware of that. What I did in my my previous video is actually did two recordings, one with the water and one with just the plane. And then when I screen recorded that animation, I just combined the two videos so that some parts I had water and some parts I didn't. Speaking of, because I'm running from a relatively modest little laptop here, what I did was I changed the animation time to something much larger than I needed it to be, close down all of these things because I don't need them anymore for my recording, started my scene run through, and then turn this off and press this button here. And my screen recording appeared a lot smoother because what I did was I took this much slower animation and then I speeded it up after the fact using a video editor. So yeah, that's how I converted this SketchUp model into a semi-photorealistic real-time render using Trimble Connect Visualizer. One thing to note is that because this is a real-time render, the more powerful your computer, the faster and better quality the render will be. If, like me, you're not running from a super powerful computer, it is worth considering reducing the number of elements in your SketchUp model so that the render does run at a reasonable rate. As ever, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Cheers.